Hi everybody, it's Miss Dawn. We've missed seeing you all, so it's great to share another Sunday School lesson with you today. Um, we're talking about Elijah and the Widow today, and this is for the week of October 11th. So if it's anywhere around October 11th, or even if it's December 25th and you're catching up, today's story is about Elijah and the Widow. Um, Elijah is a character or a person that's talked about in the Old Testament, um, and particularly in the book of Kings, there's actually two books of Kings in the Old Testament, which is that first part of the Bible that we've talked about before. Um, and Elijah was something called a prophet. Some of you might remember that a prophet is a person that God chooses to tell other people about his plans and about his wishes for the people of Israel or the um, Jewish people which were God's chosen people at the time of the Old Testament. Um, basically, today's story is about how God sent Elijah to a widow in a city called Zarephath because um, Elijah was hungry and he needed to be fed. So first, let's listen to the story. And in order to listen to the story, you're going to need your Bible. Um, I have Alexa Spark Bible, so if you have that, that would be great. Or if you have a Spark Story Bible, that's okay too, but the words might be a little bit different. So we're going to open up our Bible, and we're going to hear the story about a woman who did something really nice for a stranger. And that stranger was Elijah, who was sent from God. Before we get to the story, you might want to talk with your family about how you act when you first meet someone new. Some of us are super friendly and we like to we like to meet new people and we get excited and we say hi. Some of us are maybe a little bit more shy or bashful, so we might pull away or hide behind our mom's leg. Um, but talk to your family about how you are or how you act when you first meet someone new. And then also maybe talk about how can you tell how the other person is feeling about meeting someone new. Okay, after you've had a minute to pause me and see how my face freezes and makes a funny face, go ahead and open your Bible. And today we're going to read that story about a woman who has a lot of feelings. The story is about a widow, and a widow is a person or a woman, particularly, whose husband has died. In Bible times, widows um, had no source of income. That means they weren't allowed to have a job. They weren't allowed to earn money. And so they were often very poor. And they had to rely on the kindness of others. Or they depended on um, whatever food they could find or gather. Um, and so the story today is about how God sent Elijah to visit this particular widow. We don't even know what her name is because her name isn't used in the story, but let's see what happens to her. Let's open your Bible to 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 8 through 16. And if you're using the Spark Story Bible, you're going to go to page 140. If you're using your regular Bible, I'm going to have you pause me for a second and see if you can find the page yourself. And then when you come back, if you haven't found it yet, I'll give you the answer what page it's on. All right, Bible explorers. So for those of you who found 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 8 through 16 on your own, good job. For those of you who had a little bit of a hard time, we're actually on page 318 or 388 in the Spark Bible. And um, I'm going to go ahead and read now. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Go now to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and live there, for I have commanded to a widow there to feed you. So he set out, he's Elijah, and went out to Zarephath. When he came to the gate of the town, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and said, Bring me a little water in a vessel, so that I may drink. As she was going to bring it, he called to her and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. But she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, 
only a handful of meal in a jar. Meal is like flour. And a little oil in a jug. I am now gathering a couple of sticks so that I may go home and prepare it for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. Meaning they were very hungry. Elijah said to her, Do not be afraid. Go and do as you have said, but first make me a little cake of it and bring it to me. And afterwards, make something for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, the jar of meal will not be emptied and the jug of oil will not fail until the day that the Lord sends rain on the earth. I guess that's kind of important because at that point in time, there was a drought and a famine, meaning that there hadn't been rain in a long time and the crops weren't growing well, so the people didn't have a lot of food to eat. She went and did as Elijah said, so that she as well as he and her household ate for many days. The jar of meal was never emptied, neither did the jug of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by Elijah. All right, so now that we've read this story, here are some questions to talk about with your families. Please, please feel free to pause the video again to have more time to discuss. The first question is, how do you think this woman felt as a mom who didn't have enough food to feed her young son? Go ahead and pause and discuss. The next question is, why do you think God sent Elijah to her instead of to someone with a lot of food or money? You can pause again. The last question is, how do you think the woman felt when she was asked to make a loaf of bread for Elijah before making one for her and her son? All right, guys. So I hope you had a great discussion with your family. Those were some really good questions to think about. Um, and I think they're important things to consider because even now in our days, there's a lot of people who might not have a lot of food to eat or money to give. But um, if we do our best and do the right thing, God will always take care of us. So today we have a special activity and I'm going to kind of give you all the steps and show you what to do. Um, the video might kind of stop and start because we're going to make the activity along with you um, but feel free to get a piece of paper and a pen so you can write down the instructions that you're going to need and then as we go along I'll tell you the other things you can you will need and you can stop the video at any time and do the steps and come back okay so today we're going to make bread just like the woman in our story Make sure you have someone with you that can help you measure, cut, and use a stove or an oven. For this bread you will need, here's a picture of the recipe, and ignore our crazy dogs growling in the background. Here's our bread recipe. All right, so let's try again. Here is a picture of the bread recipe that I wrote down. So if you want to take a screenshot or pause the picture here and write it down for yourself, um, that would work. But what we need is two cups of flours, a half a teaspoon, not flours, flour, um, half a teaspoon of sugar, half a teaspoon of salt, two teaspoons of baking powder, baking powder, not baking soda, and three quarters cups of lukewarm water. And lukewarm has nothing to do with Luke Skywalker or Star Wars. Lukewarm means that it's like room temperature, not hot and not cold. The first step is to turn on your oven and preheat it to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. And then you're gonna take a cookie sheet, and pardon us, we're gonna walk across the kitchen floor here, and you're gonna line the cookie sheet with a piece of something called parchment paper, which looks like just a big sheet of wax paper. Um, and if you don't have parchment paper, then you could probably just use a non-stick cookie sheet and that would be okay. All right, back across. Um, so the first thing we need to do once we get all our ingredients together, we have our flour, our sugar, our salt, our baking powder, and our water. And we're going to put all of the dry ingredients into the bowl. So the dry ingredients are obviously the things that are not wet. So that means everything but the water. Not water. All right, 
And then once you have everything in the bowl, except the water, you can whisk all those dry ingredients together. Okay, and that's probably pretty good. Then we're gonna take the water and we're gonna mix that into the dry ingredients. And we're gonna get a, take the whisk out and we're gonna get a fork or a spatula and we're gonna mix it all together again. <laughs> Alexa's doing a good job until she just got it on her shirt. But that's okay if you make a mess while you're baking, that's part of the fun. It's really fun making messes. So the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take some flour, you're gonna sprinkle it on your countertop, make it kind of a little bit of a mess, but not too much. And then you're gonna pick up your dough, All of it. and you're gonna put it on top of the flour, and you're gonna do something called knead it, which is kind of like squeezing it and folding it. You're gonna do that just for a couple minutes until it looks a little smooth, not all clumpy, or not as clumpy, okay? And then once you're done kneading it, you're gonna flatten it out into like a shape of a rectangle. And if you don't quite know what a rectangle is yet, I'm sure your mom or dad will help you to figure out that shape. But it's kind of like a long square. It doesn't have to look perfect. And then once you have your rectangle shape, you want to fold. We got to wait for Alexa to catch up and make the rectangle. Oh my gosh. It's not. <laughs> Flatten it's... it down with your palm and make it into kind of the shape of a rectangle. And then you take the corners and you fold it so it looks like an envelope. Like envelopes? Um, it's kind of a rectangle. Now fold it. You need to make it flatter. It's too fat yet. There you go. All right. Is that flat enough? A little bit flatter. Like a flat, almost like a pancake. All right, now we're gonna fold the corners over. Into each other? Like an envelope. So it looks kinda mm -hmm. like an envelope. Oh. Like that. Okay. Right? Like if you get a birthday card in the mail, what an envelope looks like. That's kind of a really sad looking envelope, but that's the general idea. And then you can make your bread dough into whatever shape you want. So if you <gasps> kinda you want it to be a circle or a ball, that's okay. So kind of make it into your shape. I want to do a star. Um, that might be a little complicated, but you could try it. Don't make it too fat because we want it to cook, right? I don't think the star's going to work. Okay, we're going to leave ours like a circle then. We're going to pick up our dough, and hopefully before this all started, we washed our hands. I forgot to say that part, but we're yeah. all really good at washing our hands right now. We're going to take our dough over here to our cookie sheet with the parchment paper and we're gonna put it on there. And then, sorry, we're gonna use a knife uh, to do something called score the bread, a sharp knife, so this you might need help with. You can just make a few marks in the top of the bread and then that way the bread will um, cook and the crust won't get, it will cook more evenly, basically. Yeah. Yep, and then we're going to take our bread and we're going to put it in the oven that's preheated to 425 degrees. And don't drop it and tip it over. Hold on, I'm going to help her out. All right, so we got it in there. Here it is, look at that. Bread's in the oven, 425 degrees, and we're going to cook it like that, I think, for, yep. 15 minutes. Okay, so we're going to take a break, wash our hands again, and we'll be back. Okay, so we're at the end of our 15 minutes, and we're going to cool the oven down to 350 degrees. And we're going to cook it for another 10 minutes. And we'll be back again. So when you're all done with that 10 minutes of baking your bread, you're going to pull your bread out of the oven and you're going to set it on a wire rack of some sort and you're going to let it cool. And while it's cooling off, you can talk with your family about who you might like to share your bread with. 
Um, but I hope you enjoy it, and I hope it tastes good. We haven't taken ours out of the oven yet, so we'll have to wait and see. Um, Elijah was a prophet to the woman. A prophet is someone who God chose to bring God's word to people. Sometimes encountering one of God's prophets was no piece of cake. The widow of Zarephath, whose name we don't even know, was asked to do a really difficult thing. She was asked to feed Elijah when she had very little food to even feed herself or her son. But the beauty in this story is that she did it. A foreign woman who didn't worship God ended up being a great example of how to be a faithful person, to believe that God would provide for her if she helped somebody else. Who are the people in your life that have been prophets and brought God's message to you? What are some ways you might have acted like a prophet to someone else? Okay, and we're at the end of our lesson. So let's fold our hands and bow our heads and close our eyes, and we're going to pray. Thanks for joining me today. It was great to see you all. I wish I could really see you, but it was fun to spend some time together. Dear God, sometimes you surprise us, and sometimes speaking a message for you can be really hard. But you send prophets to speak your truth in every age. Help us to listen to the message you have for us and share the messages you ask us to speak for you. Amen. I all hope you all have a great week. See you next time.